Welcome to Medscape. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, reporting from the American Academy of Neurology virtual annual meeting in 2021. With me today is Dr. Sabrina Paganoni. Welcome, Dr. Paganoni. Thank you for having me. Dr. Paganoni, you are assistant professor at Harvard Medical School of Physical Medicine and Rehab and co-director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Neurological Clinical Research Institute. And I've asked you, you know, it, there's so many presentations at AAN, but I, yours was selected as one of the first to be presented with an interview with Dr. Rust. And I was really impressed. You know, there aren't too many game changers in neurology you know, what you would call a breakthrough. But uh, it might be that your research is actually a, a breakthrough. So tell us about it. Yeah, thank you. Yes, we were really honored to be featured um, at AAN and, and really to be able to describe uh, our trial results. So at AAN, we presented um, additional results from the CENTAR trial, which uh, was a trial of a new drug for ALS. The drug is called AMX. 35. And the reason we are very excited about it is because in the trial, the drug uh, provided both functional benefits and a survival advantage in people living with ALS. As you know, ALS or Lugaric's disease is a fatal disease with limited options. And so being able to do a trial and have positive results uh, were really fantastic. It was really fantastic, yeah. Right. I remember, you know, treating ALS patients. I guess there is there is a medication, right? Ryuzol that's available. That what I remember learning about it was that it was very expensive and it didn't help too much. Um, but uh, so how would this drug change? You know, does it do any better? Did you do a comparative study with Ryuzol or just natural history or what did you do? Yeah, I, I, let me say as a premise that uh, there's been some um, some good changes in the field of ALS uh, in recent years. Uh, Raluzo is now available um, at a more reasonable price than in the past, and there's been a second drug that's been um, uh, approved uh, known as Edaravon or Radicava. And there's, there's also a third drug called Nudexta that really helps with some symptoms and, and to some extent with bulbar function. So there's been some progress. Nevertheless, uh, these drugs that are approved um, don't uh, don't completely uh, resolve the problem and don't really um, slow down the disease uh, in a way that's so significant. So it's very important to add new therapeutics. So AMX35, this therapeutic that we tested in the center trial, is the first one to provide both a functional impact and a survival advantage in the same trial in people with ALS. So it's definitely uh, an ex you know, exciting news. Uh, and um, we didn't really do a head-to-head -head comparison because actually in the trial, we allowed trial participants to remain on standard of care medication. So in fact, we have the majority of the participants were already taking Rilizol, Edaravon, or both when they entered the trial. And, and in our sensitivity analysis, our results were independent of baseline uh, medication use. So what does that mean? Well, it means that most likely we, we have to treat ALS with a combination of medications. All these medications could be safely combined in our trial. And AMX35 provided, provided added value on top of standard of care, which is obviously good news because we really want to keep adding and continue to provide added value uh, for our patients. Now, I'd like to ask you to, to put this in perspective because you know I've read so many uh, trials you know, glioblastoma treatment, right? Cancer treatment. And they say, well, we've doubled survival, you know, and everybody gets very excited. It's like, well, they doubled it, you know, from three months to six months. Not really that impressive. Now, I know that the average lifespan of someone with ALS is just, just a few years. Isn't that right? Yes, there is a lot of variability, I should say. So the population is very variable. But if you just um, look at the average numbers, we're talking of about uh, three to four years after the first symptoms. So on average, uh, it is rapidly progressing. And so what do you think, how will that change taking this new drug? Right. So in our trial, uh, based on our pre-specified analysis, uh, the survival advantage that we saw in the trial over a three-year follow-up period was a survival advantage of 6.5 months in people who were started on AMX35 compared to placebo. 
Now, I would want to mention that the trial design was very patient-centered, so the, the placebo-controlled trial lasted six months. And after that, we gave participants the opportunity to take active drug long-term. So in a way, we, um, you know, we, we diluted the results, so that, that's at least our hypothesis, that by allowing even the people who originally started on placebo to, to get access to AMX35 um, you know, after six months of placebo randomized trial, um, you know, obviously we, we, we provided them with treatment as well. Uh, so I think, again, we, this is a very conservative estimate. Uh, we did do some modeling uh, comparing two predicted values. And based on that modeling, um, it, you know, we estimate that the true survival advantage might be uh, as long as one year. Um, so again, it's not, you know, the drug is not stopping the disease, did not reverse the disease. Uh, nevertheless, I would say that considering the circumstances, it's actually, it's actually a very significant change, a very significant impact. Now, um, this may be an impossible question to answer because I don't know how well worked out the pathophysiology of ALS is beyond that it's a neurodegenerative disease, but how does this new drug work? What does it do? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So uh, AMX, uh, 35 is a co-formulation of two compounds, sodium phenylbutyrate or PB, and ter or sodiol or terso. Uh, so these two components were already known uh, in the ALS field uh, because they were known to mitigate two pathways that are implicated in ALS, endoplasmic reticulum stress and mitochondrial dysfunction respectively. So we already knew from previous studies that uh, each individual compound had activity in uh, preclinical models of neurodegenerative diseases, including ALS, and was neuroprotective. But when the two components were combined in culture, they were noted to have uh, an even greater neuroprotective effect. And so the central trial, as I've described, was the first time that we studied this particular combination in people living with ALS. Would you consider this a, a phase three trial? So this was designed as a phase two trial. Um, as you know, um, you know, depending on the results and depending on the on the disease area, um, you know, uh, at times uh, from a phase two trial um, uh, sort of are, are enough to uh, for for a company to file for a new drug application. Uh, most typically, uh, a phase three trial uh, follows a phase two trial uh, to confirm the results and also to provide additional data. So in this particular case, we you know we completed the center trial. There was a phase two trial, and recently the company announced that there will be very soon a phase three trial uh, to provide more data in a larger population, broader population with longer follow-up. A global trial, um, US and Europe as well, um, and, and this I think will provide the definitive answers uh, and, and, and ultimately you know, uh, support regular applications worldwide. Now, uh, the, the, the company is already filing um, with some, in some territories. Uh, so again, it's a complex la landscape, but I think, you know, exciting results so far, and we certainly look forward to working on the phase three trial starting very soon. Right. That's what I was getting at. Uh, if it's phase three, then you can present to the uh, FDA. Now, um, you may not have had enough patients, and I wonder if this is something they can look at at the phase three trial. But what, did it matter how advanced the disease was? Um, in terms of the benefit that the patient got? Was there a way to tease that out? In other words, if you just started with ALS, did it really slow the progression a lot? Whereas if you know, you'd had it for three years and you were you know, two steps away from the ventilator, did it stop that progression or did it not really work as well? Were you able to figure that out? Well, in, in this particular trial, uh, we enrolled people who were uh, early in their disease course. So by definition, they had to uh, have been within 18 months from symptom onset. Uh, and in a way, I mean, we know in neurodegenerative diseases, it's assumed that if you intervene early, uh, you have better effect. Having said that, uh, it's important to test the drug in broader populations to see if it might have an effect also at different stages. In fact, the phase three trial will have broader inclusion criteria uh, to try to answer that question as well, you know, uh, if, if it could work at more advanced stages of the disease. Well, Dr. Pagnoni, I want to thank you for sharing your research. It really is uh, exciting. Um, we're going to have to schedule, maybe maybe after we hang up, we're going to put you on the schedule for a year from now so we can look at the phase three results 
and uh, see see how close we can get this uh, to get to the patients, you know, who are who are waiting for something that's really going to help them. Absolutely, I would be happy to be back anytime. Thank you very much for joining me on Medscape. Thank you. I'm Dr. Wilner, reporting from the American Academy of Neurology 2021 virtual annual meeting. Thanks for watching.